Today I'm going to be showing you a battery. This is the Golden Mate 20 amp hour battery. It's a lithium battery. And I think it's important to try different batteries. I've tried and used different lithium batteries in the past for my different radio uh, needs and for the RV. The company Golden Mate reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to look at their 20 amp hour battery. I've done a review on the 100 amp hour battery before, but I have different needs and can show you a different use case for this battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, 12 volts, 20 amp hours. That means the resting voltage is 12.8 volts, which is great for running a radio. Golden Mate did provide this battery for me for free in exchange for this video showing you what this battery can do. Now, Golden Mate does not have the ability to tell me what to say in this video. My opinions are my own, and I'm going to share with you what I think about this battery. So looking at the manual, here are the specifications for this battery. It's 12.8 volts. The capacity is 20 amp hours of use. The energy is 256 watt hours. Now the measurements are in millimeters and I don't have the conversion for that off the top of my head, but it's 181 millimeters long by 76.5 millimeters wide and 167 millimeters tall. The charging voltage is 14.4 volts with a maximum of 14.6, which means if you have a solar panel and a solar charge controller, you can charge this battery with that out in the field. Now this is not a low temperature sensor battery, so you have to make sure that you're not using this, at least charging it in cold temperatures. So you can use it, but you just can't charge it. That'll damage the battery. Now these small little battery packs can be connected in parallel or in series to get either more capacity or more voltage, depending on your application. But for this video, I'm gonna show you what it's like to use this single battery in my ham radio operations. Now what I have for this test is the battery itself, some fuses, the microphone and a radio. I'm using a Kenwood TMV271A. This is a two meter only radio, but it's 60 watts. So it's a high power radio and this should be a good test hooking up to the battery. I'm also gonna be using my PowerWorks Precision Watt Meter for what that's worth, just so I can see what kind of power draw this thing is pulling as far as amps and what kind of voltage this thing drops to while we're using the battery or using the radio. And that'll let me hook up this fuse block so that at least the radio will be protected. Normally you'll put your fuses right on the battery or as darn close as you can. But in this case, I don't have any extra wiring for my little test and this is what we're gonna do. And as a backup plan, I'll be using my voltmeter as a way to check at different spots to see the different voltage, the voltage drop if there's any as we're operating. And because we're in the shack, all I have to do is extend the coax from my antenna that's outside of my home and hook it right up to the radio, and that'll give us our little test environment. Why I think this is useful is because if you like portable operating, like I do, and many of you do as well, having the ability to operate with a lithium battery is a game changer. To start off with, the battery measures out at 13.24 volts, which is good. That's a good resting voltage for this battery. Anytime you see a 12.8 volt battery, that's really what it's going to be is 13 volts. All right, I've got everything hooked up. We've got the battery connected to a fuse, and that's hooked up to the PowerWorks voltmeter, watt meter, and the radio is connected to the coax. Now we're ready to do the test. So now to test this out, I'm going to make a couple of test calls on Simplex. We're going to be using 146.52 for this test, and uh, we'll probably get someone to talk to us, but at the same time, we'll get to see what kind of amperage or draw we're getting as we're transmitting. Now, because we're operating on battery power, I wanna use low power setting because we'll get the most out of our battery on low power. We'll see what that draws, then we'll go up to high power. K7SW, this is a test, one, two, three, K7SW. So that was only a six amp draw, which is not bad. K7SW, one, two, three, K7, Sierra Whiskey testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Now this radio doesn't have a medium power. We've only got low power, which is 10 watts, and high power, which is 60 watts. That's six zero. All right, to start, we're at 13.08 volts. Now, even though you're not transmitting, you are listening. So the receiver is drawing some power. So just under a half of an amp, to actually just have the radio on. K7 Sierra Whiskey, K7 SW, this is a test. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. 
So that was 10 amps, 10 amps, and that took the battery down to 11 point something volts. Um, this is Kevin, K7SW, down at Spanish Fork. K7SW, yes, Kevin, that's a new call sign for me because it's been a couple of years since we spoke. Uh, this is Patrick in Mapleton, uh, Alpha Alpha 7, Papa Hotel. So the QSO went on for eh, almost 10 minutes, and the battery is still running good. I ran the battery on high power for about half the time. Then I dropped down to low power because I didn't know how long the QSO was going to go. And since I haven't tested the battery fully, I wasn't sure if I was going to run out of power that quickly. So we know that on high power, I'm drawing 10 amps, a little over 10 amps at 60 watts. So it's still pretty good. 10 amps will give me two hours of solid transmitting on this battery. And I think that's really good. And on low power, the battery only consumed about six and a half amps. And that was really good. That means I could transmit for an awful long time. And if I was activating a Parks on the Air or something like that, where I had a solar panel or another way to recharge, I could probably go on for a substantial amount of time. So for comparison, using my voltmeter, I'm at 13.24 volts. Using the watt meter, which is a little further down the line, it's 13.1 volts. So there's not really much of a voltage drop. So I think it's pretty accurate, the readings that we got for this test. Now, a battery like this is not really meant for a starting system. It's meant for more like a trolling motor or ham radio in our case, or something like that. You might run some LED lights to power it in an emergency. And this will last an awful long time. Now, because I don't have any capacity test equipment, I can't run this battery down and tell you exactly how it is. There are other reviews out there that will actually do this for you, tear it apart, and so you can get a good idea for what this battery is made of and how long this thing will last. But I hope this example shows you what you can do with a battery like this. If you're interested in one of these, check the link down below. I want to thank Golden Mate for sending me out this battery to show you how you can use this for ham radio or any of your preparedness setup. Make sure you click that like button, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.